How's it going? Today I'm going to be talking about the AC sine wave. So this right here is the sine wave. You get your sine, you get your wave. No, not that kind of wave. Yeah, that kind of wave. You slam them together and you get your AC sine wave. This waveform can be produced from an external force rotating a coil through a magnetic field. The force can be obtained from many different sources such as wind, steam and so on. And what the end result is, is an alternating current and voltage which we can use. The mathematical form of the sine wave can be expressed in the following. Where V is the instantaneous voltage at any point in time. D is the DC offset of the sine curve. A is the amplitude. F is the frequency. T is the time. And theta is the phase shift. There are three different ways we can express the magnitude of a sine wave. One being the peak value, this is the same as the amplitude. Another is the peak to peak value. The peak to peak value is the difference between the highest instantaneous voltage and the lowest instantaneous voltage. And there is an RMS value. The RMS value is the equivalent DC voltage of an AC circuit and is defined as the root 2 over 2 times the amplitude, working out to be approximately 70.7% .7 the value of amplitude. Other things to consider is the period and frequency. The period is the time it takes for the sine curve to repeat itself once, while the frequency is the amount of times the sine curve repeats itself per second. Therefore we can define the period as 1 over the frequency, Knowing this, we can define the angle of velocity as 2 pi times the frequency, or rearranging around, the angle of velocity equals 2 pi over the period. Determining lag and lead can be a little bit confusing, so I've got an example here with a sine and a cos curve. The cos curve looks like a shifted to the left sine curve, and looking left to right, it comes first. So we can say that the cos curve leads the sine curve, and we could also say that the sine curve lags the cos curve. The magnitude of lag and lead is dependent on the difference between the two starting points of each curve. Alrighty, for a final question, we got Vt equals 3 plus 5 sine 10t plus 90 degrees. We can see there's a 3 plus 5, that means the whole graph is going to shift up by 3. We see the 90 at the end, that means the graph is going to shift to the left by 90 degrees. We work through all our values, and one of the tricks at the end is finding the frequency. That frequency is hi hidden in the 10, so we can rearrange the angular momentum formula and get frequency as seen there. Alrighty, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you and goodbye.